as i mentioned earlier uh, so we were using uh, we wanted to use something which can generate scripts and also uh, update it and then send it to service now using mcp uh, we can leverage this functionality but uh, and i showed it last time but there were some issues i wanted to package it and that's why i've created this repo i am going to show you how to install this and run it on your desktop so it will be fully available offline to you so that you can run it on your system. So first what we'll do, we'll just clone this repository. So if you go to whatever uh, like terminal that you have, I'm using WinSurf. And if I'll just say, as you can see, it is uh, retrieving, cloning the repository. And um, yeah. So it has already uh, done that. Now what I'll do again, I will just come here and copy the commands. So I have to just go step by step, okay? And once you have that, now you have to first set up your Python virtual environment. So what we are doing basically, like uh, we want to run, so we have created, there are two files here one is this uh, script generator and another is mcp tool now mcp tool is a python file that um, contains the servers mcp servers okay so as you can see i'm just following the step one by one and here is our requirement txt so if you'll just run it over here yeah so it has already ran now so we already have everything and uh, i believe we we have to just create a env dot env file which will contain all the sorry which will contain all the environment variables so we will be using openai key and uh, instance url and uh, username and password so but you don't have to provide it over here you just have to create it right now and uh, that's it so once you have done that now you can go and run your mcp tool first you can run this Python script because there if you'll run this one so yeah as you can see it has run now so here is our script manager which contains uh, multiple sections First is to create or generate a script. Second is manage business rules. Third is the client script. And fourth is the environment variables. Now, environment variable is uh, here you can update your environment variable. So you have to add your OpenAI key, uh, ServiceNow instance URL, username, password, and basic auth. Okay. So let. So as you can see, uh, so first we have done um, now i've updated the environment variables and it had open ai key and everything running okay so what i'll do i'll just uh, re-trigger my so i'll just add it over here and first i will trigger the script generator which will update this and as you can see i have uh, the admin Okay, so let me just update this. And I've added it so that it becomes easier for you to. So you can just sim now the app is up and running. So it is locally running on your local host at 7860. And uh, 
now and in this app you can do multiple things so i i hope you have added all the environment variables and once you have added that you can either create a script so like can you create an alert in uh, alert uh, on load of the form okay so if i'll just say that so as you can see uh, incident form has been loaded and if i'll say create on platform then the script named uh, can you create an alert on load has been successfully created on incident so again this the things that we have created this the name of the script is this only it will be created in our system but uh, uh, idea is not to create automatically everything this is a very like learning project which can also help so as you can see yeah it has already created it but um, the name is incorrect there may be other things which will be incorrect so and uh, um, so you it it needs to be supervised okay so you have to supervise that okay and this is what we want and these are the small small things that changes that we have to do now next uh, i will move on to the update because many people said that we may not always have to create things create a script so what if i want to update a script so let's just search with um, so this is the name of the script and uh, i can search anything which contains update and in incident so let's just see what it comes so first it will do it will search the top five incidents which contains this name now suppose i want to check uh, uh, update in child incident so i can just simply click over it and that will automatically pull that information over here and uh, so let's just uh, wait for it yeah so as you can see it has already pulled all the uh, the whole script of that now it contains a lot of information and um, there are debug and uh, so uh, if i say that okay um i don't want to add uh, can you remove all the debug lines from the script now there are two ways we can update it so we can update directly using ai or uh, and also if there is something missing then what we can do we can simply check it by ourselves that okay everything is looking same similar and this is what we want there is nothing different otherwise i can just update it uh, like this and then simply click on save to sn again all these steps needs to be supervised because uh, it will uh, do the changes so uh, this uh, business rule with society has been successfully updated with the new script uh, it is showing cross because uh, um, means it has updated it so if i'll just go there in the business rules and see the latest updated one as you can see updated child incident just now so it has already updated it it's just why it was showing cross because it was not able to formulate so i wanted to formulate it better but you know that llm is non-deterministic right so formatting and making sure that it provides the information in a very particular way is sometimes uh, it is not able to do it so that's why i get these type of like um, so i just i'm just showing whatever uh, we are getting the response you can do multiple uh, like if you want to update another one you can just simply click over there and then update it and uh, it same goes for the uh, client scripts so if i'll say um, add and uh, let's see uh, i it's an optional field so uh, it can just search uh, um, anything which has add in it and if there is uh, i have not added this um, um, like error handling that if there is no script it will not add that script so it will it will just uh, become empty uh, if there is no script so still it means i'm hoping that people will use it only for like if you want to if you really know which script that you are looking for
okay so this is uh, the small version where you can just uh, like uh, put your script uh, edit it and then uh, update it now so this is if you don't have any like uh, code version or like cloud and all those things now the most important part that i'm going to show is the next part yeah so i was saying that uh, we have two scripts in our system. So if uh, one is the MCP server and another is our UI, we, uh, MCP client, which is uh, using that MCP server. Now, MCP client can be anything. So this windsurf can also be an MCP client. And uh, MCP, um, a cloud desktop can also be an MCP client. Now, if I want to use these uh, um, these tools that we have that we saw over there with a cloud desktop how can we do that so th again the, uh, i have added everything in the in the system so as you can see i have provided that you can use it with cloud windsor or cursor you just have to use copy this configuration file because our server is running on 9123 port so mcp server so you can just go to your cloud, okay? And uh, if I'll, so second thing is uh, you open the develop, sorry, uh, file, sorry, here, settings. In settings, go to the developer. And I already have it, but let me just update. So you click on this edit config, edit config will open cloud desktop for uh, config JSON. Okay, so I have to open it with, let's just open it with windsurf or VS Code. So as you can see, it has uh, this. Now I'll just remove it. Or you can just copy uh, whatever is present. Make sure that um, the command is npx, argument is mcp remote, and this is the wherever, whichever port your server is running, that is the port. So if I'll just save it, and then you have to restart okay so let's just quit and say claude and here you see all the create business rule create client script get business rule get client script uh, list business rule list client script, update update everything is here so if i'll say can you um fetch any client script with add in the name from service now so yeah and it is going to use the list client script uh, that mcp server that we have created and you just have to click on allow and the response has got uh, it it has received the response and the, as you can see it has received the top life uh, client script which has add in the name so inform user to add content add now if i want to say that uh, uh, add uh, inform user to add content to step if i'll say can you get more details about this client Script. So now this is a chat interface. Uh, you can do all the chatting and uh, you can ask it to update it. You can do whatever you want with it. So here. So as you can see, it has provided you all the information that um, a table, what is the table, when, what type of it is, what script it is. And if you want to update that script and ask it to do, uh, like, uh, can you add logs in it? So, yeah, so as you can see, it has modified the script with the logs. So it is using console.log, which is not correct, but still it will work out. So update the client script has been done. It has successfully updated the script. So you, you see the same server can now be used with the cloud. And again, 
this is another type of client, MCP client. So I was just saying that uh, uh, so we can use it for with any type of MCP client, uh, whether it can be uh, of MCP client that we have developed or the cloud or windsurf or cursor. Uh, so cursor and windsurf are the IDEs which can also um, like uh, use MCP tools. Okay, so yeah. And if you have any questions, please reach out.